questions. Um, <clears throat> when you compare uh, systems of other countries, do they, the ones that you've analyzed here, generally have some sort of redistricting process? Or is it, or Single member it? district systems among these have redistricting processes, and in none of them do you find that elected officials draw the maps. These are nonpartisan redistricting commissions. The only exception is New Zealand, which has one representative of the majority party and one representative of the opposition party on the panel, but otherwise it too is nonpartisan. The United States is the only democratic system in the world that I know of that allows elected officials to draw their own maps. <coughs> and there's a good reason for that, as we've seen with this one. When will you know whether you're going to go forward with your uh, initiative? You said money is an issue. Uh, yeah, I, I wish I could give you a hard date, and it really depends upon our ability to um, raise money to do the work that needs to be done to get something on the ballot. And I think those who care about this effort, uh, I have no you know, personal interest in this myself, so I'm going to say Ohio Citizen Action, the League of Women Voters of Ohio have been taking a leadership role this, thus far among organizations, and people who care about this would be free to make a contribution to either of those organizations, and if they like, designate it for precisely this purpose. But it, your goal is to have it on the ballot next year? So the goal would be to have it on the ballot. So we've got to move very quickly, Bill, and I, I wish I could give you a definite timetable, but more than anything else, it hinges upon our ability to raise money. And I, you know, I think there's an opportunity here given that we now know that the Democratic Party-led effort to put the referendum on the ballot is dead, right? So I think that was the focus of attention. But really, at the end of the day, that was just a short-term solution, right? Because all that was going to affect was the 2012 elections. After that, you know, the legislature would have been free, I think, to draw another map, as I understand the Ohio Constitution. Uh, so we really need to be focused now, it seems to me, on a long-term solution, which in my view, only an initiative constitutional amendment voted on by the people of Ohio can provide. Would that um, also affect general assembly districts or is it just for congressional? I, I think that remains to be determined, but my, my view, and I, I, I know Professor Gunther agrees, is that it should. Uh, uh, that we should have a plan, or so we should have a redistricting uh, constitutional amendment that would require the redrawing of both state legislative districts and congressional districts put on the ballot in 2012 to be voted on in 2013 so that 2014 and forward we'd have fair districts in the state of Ohio. And that, I think, needs to be the priority of everyone who cares about our democracy and cares about having a real democracy in this state. And the ballot initiative would, it would not specify a map, but would create a commission. That's exactly right, uh, Joe. It would, it would um, and you know, we've, we've been working on a draft, as I mentioned. So the, the um, real challenge here, and I think it's a challenge that we're well on our way to surmounting, is finding a way of selecting commissioners so that they will be serving the interests of the people, not the interests of one party or the other. And I think we're well on our way to towards dealing with that problem, following something like the California model, which was very successful in putting partisan interests aside and focusing on the interests of the people. Um, in terms of the criteria that this commission would take into account, it would be the same four that we've been talking about here today. Representational fairness, competitiveness, compactness, and adherence to community boundaries. I was going to make that same comment. Um, I think one other aspect of the proposal that we've been developing is that I think we've concluded that politicians should not be drawing their own boundaries. And therefore, as in the case of the California redistricting reform process, uh, there is general agreement that uh, we would like to move forward with some kind of citizens commission that would be nonpartisan, that would be representative of all of the population of Ohio, the diversity of Ohio would be reflected on that commission. 
and it would be specifically focusing its efforts on the four democratic principles that we've enumerated. And we've tested twice now in statewide competitions where representational fairness, competitiveness, compactness, and community preservation have been the criteria. We have found that it is possible to create wonderful maps that maximize each and every one of those four core democratic principles. And it's interesting to note that uh, our prize winner uh, in this latest round, and also one of the prize winners in a previous round, happens to be a Republican state legislator from Illinois. Uh, and he did a marvelous job of creating a system that would really represent Ohio in a manner that is much better than we currently see. You and or your allies in 2005 put a similar proposal, at least with a similar goal, on the ballot. I, I well recognize it was on with three other proposals, but they were three other proposals which the advocates thought were popular, yeah. and polls even showed some of them were popular, like bringing down the amount of money you could contribute, and yet that proposal, well, I think all of them went down something like three to one. It yeah. wasn't even close. So I guess the question is, what's what would be different this time around I mean, other than, yeah. okay, it's by itself and not isn't dragged down by the other three, but it was hard to make a point that the other three dragged down that one. Uh, so I, so I, it's different this time Yeah, around. so let me, let, I, I wasn't directly involved in, in the Ron effort, but let me focus on what I think the two big differences are. One is that the proposal that we're working on now focuses on an independent citizens commission and these four criteria, whereas the raw and redistricting emission uh, proposal last time around was focused almost exclusively on competitiveness, right? And if you put competitiveness on its own as the criterion, well, you're going to wind up with some oddly shaped districts, which I think is what turned a lot of people off last time around. We think competitiveness is important, but we also recognize that it's not the only criterion, that we've got these other three criteria, compactness, um, representational fairness, and adherence to community boundaries. That should make this proposal a lot more attractive to Ohio voters. The other key difference is we're in env an environment. I mean, this is about the worst example of partisan gerrymandering, of uh, elected officials serving their own craven self-interest that we've seen anywhere in the country. And a lot of people, Republicans, Democrats, independents, members of third parties, have been appalled by this process. And the more they learn about how awful the current system is, the more appalled they'll become. And it's interesting. Uh, um, I, I really do think that Dan was getting at that notion of this as being a teachable moment. In many ways, one of the things that happened with Ron is it's, and, and everybody has their reason why this went down, but one of the major reasons I think that it went down was it just popped up out of nowhere. There wasn't this process for thinking through well, wait a second, what, what makes for good reform? What are the details in a proposal? And, and Dan touched on the whole money thing, and of course, you know, money of course is a factor. We can't, you know, you know we can't eat sunshine. Uh, you know, uh, that's, the, that's the way it works. But the thing to remember is we now have an opportunity to work with all sorts of people and get the best insights from all, all, all of Ohio by putting it on the table that we want good information so that we can go forward, whether it is an initiative ballot or some other way to change the Constitution. This is this moment where we can actually have a good conversation because we can look at the maps, we can understand um, what happened here, um, and we can get the best insight from all Ohioans. It was not something that just kind of popped up uh, with some political consultants. Why do you think that next year in an election that's probably going to be decided on the economy with unemployment been close to 10 percent for a long time, uh, why do you think you can get people to pay attention to, uh, to these issues? Because I think the legislators, when they act as you said they did, sort of act on the basis that they know people aren't paying attention to what they're doing. So why would they pay attention to it next year when you're going to have 
presidential campaign, a U.S. Senate race, and other? I think there are a couple of factors. First, um, I think the state of the economy is only one of those factors that voters will have in mind. And quite frankly, the economy is improving. Uh, and it may not be as important an issue as it has been over the past year or two. Secondly, there is a new factor, um, and that is the level of public disgust with yeah. the misbehavior, with the dysfunctionality of our Congress in particular is absolutely unprecedented. There never has been such a level of contempt for the misbehavior of members of Congress uh, that we see today. Uh, one poll showed that it actually reached a 9% approval rating before bouncing back way up into the stratosphere to 11%. Uh, I think this is a brand new issue that I think even though voters will be focusing on the state of the economy, they will also be concerned about major problems with the workings of our democracy per se. If there's anything that unifies people in this state and this country across the political spectrum nowadays, it is distrust of, even disgust for, the way that incumbent politicians are misusing their power. This is a prime example of that, and indeed, the polarization that we see in Congress, the gridlock we see, their inability to get anything important done, is a direct result of the way our districts are drawn, among other things. When we have extreme Democratic and extreme Republican districts, we get extreme Democratic and extreme Republican representatives. That has to change. How are you working, though, I mean, you noted money, how are you working to overcome what you're going to need, that huge disparity you're going to need to, you know, in terms of raising all that money that you're going to need to put something on the ballot, and then get your message out amongst the presidential race, the U.S. Senate race, and everything else going on? Um, I, you know, I, I think the big challenge is money right now. We are just getting started because of the end of the referendum campaign. Um, but I have no doubt that if we're able to raise the money that's needed to put this thing on the ballot, this thing is going to sell itself to Ohio voters who are completely disenchanted with the terrible process that we've seen over the past several months, the worst example of politicians serving nakedly their own self-interest. So I, I think this thing is going to sell itself if, if we're able to get the money together that it's going to take to gather the signatures and get this thing on the ballot. How much money do does it take? You probably have the best. Uh, um, you know, clearly a couple million um, minimum. Um, five is reasonable. How are you getting that money? Are you, are you approaching the parties? Are you approaching, who are you, are you trying to do it on your own? How are you going to try to raise all that, that the money that's needed? Well, initially, uh, okay, well I will throw it to <laughs> yeah. Initially, uh, we will be limiting our approach to those good government uh, foundations that do in fact support uh, the improvement of American democracy. Uh, we have scrupulously <coughs> avoided any kind of contamination by being associated with one political party or another, and we'll continue to do that.